What's up smart homers? Today I want to give you a step-by-step -step guide on creating a wall-mounted control dashboard for Home Assistant. Fully Kiosk Browser is an app that can turn your tablet or even your phone into a kiosk. The browser displays whatever URL you point to in full screen mode and it can even be used as a lockdown app to lock down what apps can be used. Giving it full permissions can also allow for full remote control of the device, including the camera, microphone, and other sensors. Then you can expose these sensors to Home Assistant and use them for automation triggers and pull the video feed, for example, into Home Assistant. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install Fully Kiosk on a Fire HD 10 tablet, and then I'm gonna show you how to integrate that with Home Assistant so that you can pull that sensor data in. The reason I chose a Fire tablet is not only are they cheap, but also they are an Alexa Media device, which means they work with the Alexa Media device integration with Home Assistant and can function pretty much like an Echo Dot, as well as being a control dashboard. This is pretty awesome, and it's gonna actually replace the Echo Dot in my kitchen. So the first step is gonna to be to get your Fire HD tablet set up. What you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to get the Fire Toolbox from XDA Developers. I'll leave a link in the description. You're gonna to navigate to that link, and then you're gonna read over the description of what it does. This toolbox allows you to remove lock screen ads if you have any, add Google services like the Google Play Store, allowing you to install all the apps that are on the Play Store, and so much more. It even allows you to switch the voice assistant for the tablet from Amazon Alexa to Google Assistant. So further down that page on the link that you went to, you need to check to make sure that your device is supported in the list of supported devices. If you bought the tablet I did, which is the Fire HD 10 2019 edition, you're good to go. Scroll all the way down to the download section and download the latest version of the toolbox. While it's downloading, plug your tablet into your PC via the USB cable, and then return to your tablet. You need to put your tablet into developer mode. So you're gonna go to settings, and then scroll all the way down to device options, and then tap about Fire Tablet. Repeatedly tap serial number until it tells you that developer options are enabled. Then press back, and then tap the new developer options menu that appeared, and then toggle them on. Tap OK, and then scroll down to USB debugging, and toggle it on. Tap OK on the window that pops up, and then another window is going to pop up because your tablet's connected to your PC. You're going to click Always Allow, and then you're going to click OK. So next, you're going to run the toolbox on your PC by double-clicking it. You'll need to go through the basic tool tutorial, which I recommend paying attention to because it tells you all the different features that this toolbox can do. Once you're all the way through it, you can begin configuring your tablet. If you bought one with lock screen ads, click Lock Screen Management, and then click run next to the remove lock screen ads option. Once that's done, click the back arrow in the upper left corner and then click the Google services option. This option will help you install a Google Play Store and other things needed to run it like a normal Android tablet. Click execute tool and wait for the install to complete. A message box will pop up telling you that it's best practice to wait 10 minutes before you log into your Google account on the Play Store on your tablet. Click OK, and while you're waiting, you can install a custom launcher if you like. I like Nova Launcher, so I installed that by clicking the custom launcher option, and then selecting Nova Launcher, and then clicking the disable fire launcher radio button, and then checking the enable widgets checkbox. Finally, click the yes button, and that will go ahead and install the new launcher. So lastly, if you want, you can disable some Amazon apps that are on the tablet by default. Click manage Amazon apps and then click standard deep Blow in the drop down menu and then click execute. If you want you can manually disable the apps which is what I did but I ended up just disabling all the ones that they do in the standard deep Blow anyway. Okay so now your tablet's set up you can go ahead and log into your Google account on the Play Store. Once that's done you need the fully kiosk app so you can download it from the Google Play Store and install it and it seemed to work fine but I got a message saying that you need the specific one for the Fire HD tablet that is on our website. So I just got that one. I'm not sure if there's really a big difference since you're kind of converting this Fire tablet into a standard Google tablet, but I downloaded the one from the website and installed it. You may have to turn on permissions to allow the tablet to install third-party apps. 
So once the app is installed and you've opened it, you're gonna swipe from the left-hand side of the screen and you're gonna see the options. The first thing I would do is get the Plus license. It's only like eight bucks US and to me it's well worth it. The license is only for a single device, but it removes this nasty looking watermark that's gonna stay on the screen if you use any of the Plus options. We are gonna be using quite a few Plus options so it's well worth it to get that just to get rid of that watermark. Here I'm just going to go through the list of all the different settings that I turned on. You can do it however you want, but these are the settings I use to set up this tablet. Once you've got the license or whatever and you're back in that options menu, you're going to click web content settings. You set the start URL as the URL of your Home Assistant instance and specifically the Loveless page that you want to bring up when this tablet starts. You should create a Loveless dashboard specifically for this tablet and the tablet's gonna start on that page every time Fully Kiosk runs. The username is gonna be whatever username you want Fully Kiosk to log into Home Assistant using, and the password is gonna be whatever password you set up in Home Assistant. Autoplay audio should be on, enable file upload should be on, enable camera capture upload on, enable video capture upload on, pop-ups on, enabling webcam access should definitely be on, enabling microphone access should be on, Play videos and fully should be on. All right, so the next you wanna go back and then go to web browsing settings. You're gonna enable pull to refresh and you can also enable the load start URL on home button. I turned on animate page transitions as well. If you go back and then go to the device management options, I chose unlock swipe screen lock experimental and also launch on boot. Launch on boot means that every time the tablet restarts, it's gonna automatically launch fully kiosk. If you go back and look at the next option, kiosk mode. We're not gonna actually turn anything on, but I wanna show you these options because they're pretty cool. This is what allows you to lock down the tablet so you can only launch apps that fully kiosk says to launch. Also allows you to force set the volume, the brightness, all sorts of things. So it's a really cool option if this is gonna be used in a public place. So if you go back, the next option, motion detection. This is key. The motion detection settings will allow you to use the tablet as a motion detector in Home Assistant. And not only that, but also it allows you to turn the screen on when you walk up to it, similar to like how a Nest thermostat works. I set the enable motion detection on and the enable acoustic motion detection on as well. You can fine tune the sensor settings later on. So the next setting, and one of the most important, is remote administration. This allows you to remotely control your device, sending commands via Home Assistant to make the tablet do different things, and also be able to change settings from another device. You need this in order to control the tablet with Home Assistant. So you're gonna enable remote administration, and you're gonna also set a remote admin password. This can be whatever you want, but you're gonna need this later when you're integrating with Home Assistant. You're gonna turn on remote admin from local network, and here you can see the IP address of the device. You need this in Home Assistant. I made this IP address for this tablet static, so it wouldn't change. I'm not really sure if you need to do this, but that's what I did. You're also gonna enable file management on remote admin. Okay, so I promise we're almost done with the options. Go back and then go to other options. The next option is key. You need to have this in order to set up the tablet in Home Assistant. In order to set up MQTT integration with Fully Kiosk, you need to have an MQTT broker already set up in Home Assistant. So if you haven't done that, there are plenty of YouTube videos on how to do it. Go check those out. Once you've done that, you're gonna enable MQTT and then you're going to put in the broker URL. I'll display mine on the screen, but it's TCP colon forward slash forward slash and then the internal IP address, your local IP address for Home Assistant and then colon and then 1883. That is port 1883. For the MQTT broker username and password, you can put those in however you've set them up in Home Assistant. Okay, so now you've got the tablet set up as a dashboard. Before we head over to Home Assistant, I wanna show you what turning on the Fully Kiosk remote control allows you to do. While Fully Kiosk is running on your tablet, go to your PC, open up a browser, and type in the IP address of your tablet with port 2323. Type in the password that you set in the Fully Kiosk app for remote control and then click OK. This opens Fully Remote Admin web page. You can see all kinds of information about your device and it also shows the settings that you applied in the Fully Kiosk app. The cool part is the top section, Send Command to Device. This is where we can test the commands that Home Assistant could send. An example is, let's try the Show Cam Shot option. 
when you choose that option and click go, it takes a camera shot with your default camera. In this case, it's the front one on the tablet. You can also take screenshots, display messages on the tablet, etc. This app is super powerful. So now I'll show you how to expose the hardware of the tablet into Home Assistant as we integrate this. If you haven't installed the Alexa Media Player integration from Hacks, you should definitely do it. It's gonna allow you to use this tablet as an Echo device. Jump over to Home Assistant and then click on Configuration and then Integrations. In the Alexa Media Player integration, click Devices and then check for your Fire tablet in that list. What's cool is that it functions just like any other Echo speaker, so you can send text to speech messages to it and things like that. Next, we need to expose this tablet information to Home Assistant. We're gonna do this from Fully Kiosk as a REST sensor. So you need to modify your sensors.yaml file to do this. In a browser window, head to this URL that I've displayed on the screen. It's also in the link in the description. Here, someone has posted how they've exposed fully kiosk data to Home Assistant. Copy the REST sensor text and paste it into your sensors.yaml file in Home Assistant. Change the name of the sensor from foo which is what they use, to whatever you'd like to call your sensor. The JSON attributes that you see below the name of the sensor are all the different tablet data from Fully Kiosk that will be the attributes of this sensor that you're creating. Head back to the browser window and copy the next section of text. This is the resource for the sensor information, where the information is coming from. This person put it in their secrets.yaml file, but you can just put it right into you in with your sensor, which is what I'll show. Paste it in next to the resource option, where it says device IP, Put in the IP address of your tablet, where it says fully password, put in the password that you set up in fully kiosk for remote control. Save that file. If you want to break out the attributes of the sensor into multiple sensors, you can use a template sensor to do this. I've shown an example of displaying the screen brightness as its own sensor in Home Assistant. Save that file. So the person who posted this also showed a way to set up a switch that sends a command to the tablet via fully kiosk. This would be useful if you want to you know, tap a button on your dashboard to make the tablet do something. The example given is a switch that turns on and off the screen. You can copy and paste the information into your switches.yaml file and then replace the IP address and password as I've shown here. Don't forget to save it. Lastly, let's expose the camera to Home Assistant. In your cameras.yaml file or in your configuration.yaml under the camera section, add the text shown. Again, replace the tablet IP with the actual IP address of the tablet and put in your fully password for the device. Save the file. Now let's test the sensors we've added by adding them to a Loveless dashboard and then we can interact with them. After restarting Home Assistant, I added the camera, the motion sensor, and the screen switch in the entities card. You can play around with them to see how they work. The camera feed is not a perfect live stream, but it takes a few cam shots a minute, which are frequent enough to give me an idea of what's going on wherever it's pointing. Okay, so that's the basics of getting it all set up. This tablet can now be used as a security camera in whatever room you put it in. It also will act as a motion sensor. Next, I wanted to mount it to the wall, so I looked around online for a good housing to mount it in. I found this one on Etsy that I think had really great reviews and seemed decently priced. It also came with a special USB cable to help set it up properly. The mount is very well designed. It snaps together easily, but doesn't fall apart when you hang it on the wall. I also bought a recessed electrical box and a USB electrical outlet with enough current to power the tablet. I chose a location above an existing electrical outlet. That way I could just drop a wire down and tie into the power there. So once everything is installed, you can see it sits really nice and flush against the wall. Just a tiny gap. It looks super clean in my opinion. Okay, now when you run fully kiosk, how good does this dashboard look? So clean. I started playing with the motion sensor a bit. In the fully kiosk settings, I also set the screen off timer to 30 seconds. The screen will automatically go off after 30 seconds and then come on when motion is detected. I'll leave links to the mount, the recessed outlet box, and the USB outlet that I bought on Amazon. I found that the acoustic motion detector was so sensitive that just the noise from our fridge was turning the screen on, so I adjusted that sensitivity down a little bit. Now the screen comes on when I approach very similarly to how like a Nest thermostat comes on when you walk up to it. Okay, so lastly, I just wanna show you how I use the tablet, almost done. One of the biggest uses is the Alexa TTS text-to-speech feature. I have an array of different buttons on my dashboard that when you press them, send specific text-to-speech commands 
to different Echo devices. This way, my wife can, with a single tap of a button, call the kids for supper, call the kids for lunch, without having to yell down the stairs and wake the baby up. Another great use for it is I have a little button that shows me the status of the baby gate at the top of the steps. Is it open or closed? This way, my wife can quickly check to see, hey, did someone leave the gate open or not when she's getting the baby down from his high chair? Another great use for it is to control your iRobot Roomba device. You can tap the button and you can choose to start it, to stop it, find it, all the options you could do within the app. But here, it's all on one display. You don't have to open up the iRobot app. So that's really all I have for you guys. I feel like I'm leaving something out, but I hope you like what you saw. Uh, if I missed anything, hey, drop a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You can also contact me on my social media uh, link in the description. If you enjoyed this project, please like the video. And if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I got more coming up. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see ya.